Hello everyone! In the first one-step equation video, we learned how to use inverse operations to solve equations. We will continue to do this in this second video, and we will see variations and learn how to manage them. Here's our first example, and we can see on the right-hand side that we have negative 12, and we are subtracting 3 from x. Notice that this negative 12 is not going to alter the way we go about solving. The inverse of subtracting 3 is to add 3 to both sides. On the left hand side, if I subtract 3 only to add 3, I am left with x. And on the right hand side, if I owe 12 but I have 3, I still owe 9. At this point, we can take our solution, substitute it into the original equation, And if I owe 9 and I owe 3, do I owe 12? Yes, I do. So we solved it correctly. Here's our next example, and we see we have negative 18 on the right-hand side, and we are adding 5 to x. The inverse of this would be to subtract 5 from both sides. On the left-hand side, if I add 5 to subtract 5, I'm left with x. And on the right-hand side, if I owe 18 and I owe 5, I owe 23. At this point, I can take the solution, substitute it into the original equation, and check negative 23 plus 5. If I owe 23 and have 5, do I still owe 18? Yes, I do. So we've solved it correctly. In this equation, we see that we have a negative 3 in front of x. This implies a multiplication. So the inverse of multiplying by negative 3 is to divide by negative 3 on both sides. Remember that if we have negative 3 and divide it by negative 3, I'm going to get 1. So on the left-hand side, I've got 1 with x, and on the right-hand side, 12 divided by 3 is 4. 1 of each sign makes that negative. At this point, remember we can take negative 4, substitute it into the original equation, and see if negative 3 times negative 4 gives me 12. Well, remember, when we multiply two numbers that have negative signs together, that gives us 12. So we've done this correctly. Here's our next example, and we see we are dividing by negative 2. The inverse of this would be to multiply by negative 2 on both sides. And I'm going to do this with the dot. Remember that if we have negative 2 and we divide it by negative 2, this will give us 1. So on the left-hand side, we are left with 1 with x. And on the right-hand side, 10 times 2 is 20. Remember that when we multiply numbers with signs, if we have 1 of each sign, it will be negative. At this point, I can take the solution, substitute it into the original equation, and see if negative 20 divided by negative 2 gives us 10. Well, we know that 20 divided by 2 is 10, and when we divide two negative numbers, we get a positive answer. So this has been done correctly. In this next example, we see x is being multiplied by a third. So I'm going to do the inverse of multiplying by a third, which is to divide by a third on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, if I have something, like a third, and divide by the same thing, I'm left with 1. On the right-hand side, 12 is being divided by a fraction. When we divide by a fraction, we invert and multiply by it. So it's now 3 over 1. 12 times 3 will give me 36. We can check by taking a third multiplying it by 36. So 1 times 36 will give me 36 in the numerator, divided by 3. 
This gives me 12. In this example, we have a fraction as well. x is being multiplied by 2 fifths. So we're going to do the inverse of multiply by 2 fifths, which is to divide by 2 fifths on both sides. On the left-hand side, anything divided by the same anything will give me 1 with x. And on the right-hand side, 10 is being divided by a fraction. I'm going to invert and multiply by this fraction. So it's now 5 halves that I'm multiplying times 10. So I will get 50 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. And this will give me 25. At this point, I can check. So I will take 25, substitute it into my original equation, and see if 2 fifths times 25 gives me 10. Well, 2 times 25 will give me 50. In my denominator, I have 5 times 1, which is 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10. So yes, we've solved it correctly. Now I wanted to make a little clarification as to why I placed parentheses around these two-fifths that I divided by. And this is because if they weren't there, we could have had a very ambiguous situation whereby we could have seen this all written this way. Now in some places you might see the division sign here drawn really, really long, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And so if we had interpreted this to mean 10 halves being divided by 5, this would give us 10 halves being multiplied by the reciprocal of 5 over 1, which is 1 fifth. This would give us 10 over 10, which is 1. That is very different from what we actually did in the equation, which was to divide 10 by 2 fifths thereby multiplying by the reciprocal, which is 5 over 2, and getting 50 over 2, which is 25. 25 is very different from 1. That is why we need to use these parentheses when we divide. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos. And if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.